Right, well, good afternoon everybody. Ooh. I've only been up half an hour, and already I'm absolutely baking. That's uh, just going to us for here in the North East. As I say, the sun is absolutely brilliant. Beaming down after the last few days. Uh, wind, rain, cold mornings, but uh, this afternoon the sun's come out, so time for me to get cracking again and get um, get started on another vid. As I say, it's been a, a really busy week for me and Roger, um, trying to keep all the plants watered. As I say, a weekly hose is sometimes the best idea for the two big polytunnels. Uh, as soon as I come in, hook it up, put the tap on, turn it on, and uh, away it goes. I can water all them sweet corn and all them tomatoes while I'm up here. Making a film. Uh, I've been outside stripping the last of my baskets down. Now it's one of the, the jobs I've had to get out of the way over this last fortnight. Or uh, my strawberries in the bottom tunnel, in the first tunnel, we're finished flowering. We've got the uh, masses of fruit off them again this year. Not as good as what they have been in, in years past. But um, as I say, they weren't really tip top look after this year, but uh, with it still being a bit, um, bit slow on my feet. Um, some of the feedings I've got. Uh, some of the water was a bit erratic, but uh, we'll manage to try and keep on top of it as best we could. As I say, in, in the um, in the Easter time and then polytons and we had that uh, fortnight of sunshine, it was absolutely baking. So the temperatures have been really up and down for a couple of weeks now up here in the northeast. A good couple of months anyway. And uh, as I say, it's, um, we've, we've had quite a good crop, but uh, I'm pleased. One of the main jobs for us to do was to get the baskets done. Now, if you watch this in the last couple of years, uh, you know... You know how I like to, how to treat my strawberries. The first year runners always go into the baskets, and once they come out of the baskets, they go into buckets and they're treated as a second year. And uh, but this year we're not going to put our third year ones. We had a, the third year ones are outside, and they haven't done as well as what the outside ones are doing. Were we're ones that are permanently outside. They've got some lovely fruit on them and big buckets. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to stop putting the third years in the black buckets. And instead we're just going to put an extra row of main crop outside permanently. So hopefully as I say, we've just finished fruiting these ones and our outside ones are just starting to come into fruit now. Uh, they've got some lovely berries on them so no doubt in a couple of weeks time we'll be picking from them. But uh, this has been the main job to do this week is to get them all taken down, get the chains off. Does my well taking the bags off because where these are going to go they're going to sit outside on the bench, on the outside bench. Bit of cover over the top of them because they don't want to get them too watered. Um, excuse me, I don't want to get them too wet. If the rain's been as it, as it has been the last few weeks, um, the heavy showers and that. So with them having the bags in, I don't want them getting soaked. I want them to start drying off now, and what I want to do is to put a light feed on them. Um, either bluefish and bone, or what I'm going to do is to give them a couple of drinks of uh, nettle juice. Uh, and the reason why is to get these uh, produced and of course these are the runners. Now, there's been a few comments on the um, on my Facebook channel about the strawberries, about starting them off and taking runners. Now, if you want to start taking runners, whatever you do, don't nip these off. Uh, I've got a couple of guys asking us if I should cut them off. No, leave them on, let them grow to, as long as you can. And what I like to do is once I start taking the cuttings, I start trimming them down then. And I'll show you, it'll be about the middle of July. I'll let these guys Nice and big, there's one, two, three just in that plant alone. Now out of one basket I'll probably use the two side runners so they, tip, they topple down one side, whichever ones are the best ones, they'll topple down one side and I'll, I'll chop the ones off the back ones, if you know what I mean. So all the runners that's in the front I'll be potting off in the pots in front of them, but I'll show you that in a, in a later video. As I say, you, you, what you want to do is, know is to get these built up. Now there are many, there's many of these little runners and as many little plants on each runner I normally take it to about three and then I cut it from there but I will show you in the uh, in, a, in the next video coming up uh, when we start doing the strawberries but then um, as I say strip them down all the old stalks have been pulled away all the old leaves have been pulled away and they're nice and clean now and all they need now um, if you can see any bugs on them just have a good look around especially underneath they shouldn't be because they've had a a couple of doses of uh, rhubarb juice, just a light one. But uh, what I'm going to do with these, I'm going to give them a garlic spray. Now, a garlic spray it won't, won't kill the pests, but what it does is it's a preventive. And that's why I always like to do a pre preventive spray on. 
If any butterflies or anything, get onto these and start laying their eggs or you get a rare. You get the strawberry moth, any of them. You put a garlic spray on and what it does, it leaves a bit of taste in the mouth. And they hate that and it just stops them from pumping on the leaves. So the first thing I'll do with these, I'll make a garlic spray up. I've got them all sitting on the bucket now. And um, I'll do a couple of pictures of it. And then all the pups will come out in the front. And then these will start getting pegged down into there. But as I say for now, all, all I'm going to do now, they be nice and clean. I'm going to give them a good feeding, good drink of nettle juice. And I'll give them a good spray with garlic, garlic spray. And hopefully that'll keep them nice and clean. And they'll just sit in their buckets outside there for the next four or five weeks. Let these runners build up. So that's the strawberries out of the way anyway. Um, as I say, that's been one of my priority jobs to get that, get that done. Uh, my next job to do, there we are. And that's, I'm over the moon with these. That's, these are my, um, my croissants. Now as I say, as earlier on the show, I'll be, um, earlier on the video, I'll be, I'll be showing you how I go on with these. And these will be exactly the same. These have had nothing until I went outside about four weeks ago. I put them out. They've been outside with all that wind and all that rain. And they're absolutely fantastic. No extra feed or nothing. All the feed that I've got is in the pot. So exactly the same. Again, what I'm going to do with these, I'm going to give them a garlic spray. Really soak the leaves because what you can't get if you get uh, the likes of leaf mine on, on these. And they really make a nasty um, patchwork all over, the, uh, all over the leaves. They start biting into the leaves and you get uh, you get some really bad marks on them. But uh, So what I'm going to do with these tonight... I'll give them a garlic spray, and then maybe in a week's time, fortnight's time, if they're still nice and clean, I might drop a bit of garlic onto them, uh, a bit of their rhubarb juice, just to keep them nice and clean. But uh, the priority tonight, I'm going to just work my way through them. Uh, as I say, with these ones, they've been stopped, so I like to flower these three up. Now, just looking at that one, if I turn it on gradually, um, if you remember, I say there was about four or five um, new shoots come away from that one, and I like to leave them. I like to leave them till I get a good, decent size so I can get my fingers. Oh, well, these I've left a little bit too long, but no matter. Um, it means I can get my fingers in, and if I count that outside one there, that main one there, and that main one there, that's three absolute beauties. But just underneath here, on the side there, there's a little thin one there, so if I just finger and thumb, just ease it or tease it away, and there we are, it pulls away. Now that'll make a fantastic cutting. If you've only got a couple of plants with one variety, and then when you take a side shoots off, once again, just cut it below that lower leaf there, strip them bottom stems off, just cut it below that lower leaf there, pull them two away, and that'll make a fantastic little cutting. Put that in a good damn um, rooting compound, they have uh, multi-purpose compost and plenty of good sharp sand, a little plastic bag over it, or a, in a propagator, and that will root away in a couple of weeks in this heat, no problem. And once again, you'll have extra stock. Um, if you've only got one or two of each variety, then that's the best way of building your stock up. And that will well root before uh, before the summer time. You make it a small flower of it, but if you don't, at least you've got the root ball. <coughs> Or what we call the stool, you'll have the stool from the plant, so you've got two stools to take cuttings from next year when you put them on the heat bed and you start taking your own cuttings. But yeah, they make fantastic cuttings. But that's the way I do um, that's where I do my croissants. Now I'm well chuffed for that. Now that's one, two, three, there's actually four on there, there's another thin one in the centre there. But I'm just going to leave that for the time being because these side ones are lovely and thick. They're well branching out and I'm over the moon with them. And this is of course this is a Max Riley. And it's absolutely beautiful. And most of the, most of the croissants are look like that now. So I'm over the moon with them. So we'll get that out of the way. Uh, as I say, I'll put a light, um, a light feed on there. If not, I'll juice. And I'll just give them a spray of um, garlic. And I'll stop anything from eating the leaves. That's them um, out of the way. So my next job this week is a priority job. I've got to go and get some manure tomorrow. And I'm going to fill uh, three big plastic troughs there. What I've got down the bottom. With some, I'm way behind this year with, with my dahlias, but uh, no doubt, once again, I'll crack on and uh, just getting them in the ground or getting them in a bucket so I save my own stock for next year as my priority. Um, I've been set back pretty well this year with uh, one thing and another, but it's my main job is to attempt to get these, uh, get these planted out this week. 
Oh, uh, Dean Ross mentioned the other night on his channel on the Back Garden Veg Show, show that uh, he was planting his dahlias. Now the difference between the dahlia, well, once again, is your show dahlias, and that's one of my show dahlias. It's an absolute corker. It should have been out now, like. Um, and of course this is Barbary Pink. It's an absolute beaut. Nice big, um, nice big flowers from that one. And then again, the difference between that and that is these are bedding dahlias. Now as I says to Dean, if you let these grow on, the bedding dahlias, you will get a small tuber from them. But they're not worth saving, they're not worth taking up room in your greenhouse. Because for the simple reason, bedding dahlias are that easy to grow and they're that cheap to grow. They're an absolute beautiful flower. Put them in your garden and by all means if one comes up that you really like, um, save it, save the tuber. But uh, for me, it's a big show one that I like. Um, so the bedding dahlias, as I say, you get a pack of seed for a couple of quid and you get 40 seed in there and uh, that's just a little tree of mine off me bench, off me, me bed and bench and they're going to be planted out in the back garden next week. Can I beat them for a show and all of what once again I get a top snip out like these ones, snip the tops out as I do with all the dahlias and they'll quite happily bush out now and make a lovely plant for planting out then. I can't repeat them for, uh, for showing the board. So it's the bed and dahlias and the, the giant dahlias. Um, one more thing to go out is these, and of course, with these chrysanthemums, they're outdoor, outdoor varieties. Um, and these are the gombi, the gombi pink. I got these from Dean Hood last year, and I managed there, uh, to keep three stools through the winter. And what I did this year, I took a load of cuttings off them. Now these are outdoor varieties. Now the reason I haven't stopped these for because uh, within outdoor varieties they tend to break itself and, and of course that's send our own side shoots away. You can stop them if you want, but they I tend to just let them grow away because they're not a big plant, they're only they're only medium, they'll only grow at about two, two and a half to three foot, um, if that. And you get a you get a lovely cluster of flowers from these, but they I tend to just let them break away myself. And um, as I say, once again, you get a lovely flower from them. But saving the stools, that's what it's all about. You can put them in the greenhouse um, once you dig them up, or you can just leave them in the land and they'll, uh, they'll shoot away in mid May to June, and you get plenty of cuttings off them next year. But there. That's the aliens and croissants again. For this, for this week, anyway, I'm on a rare, uh, as I say, I want to crack on getting most of them planted out. But uh, my main job has been the strawberries, getting the strawberries cleaned up. But uh, we'll go, I'll show you all on the benches how I'm getting set up over there. And then we'll finish off this video down home. And I'll show you how I'm getting on with the, uh, with the basket challenge. The only thing I've got to do in, in the bottom tunnel is to plant out my melons. So I'm going to do that in this video. Hopefully I'm going to do it tomorrow. Uh, if the sun stays out. And we'll, uh, we'll finish off that bed. The uh, sweet corn's grown away fantastic. I've just given that a little bit sprayed with rhubarb juice. And there's me, there's me rhubarb juice I made the other week. I'll give it a good spray of that. Um, so I will give it another spray, and then uh, that'll be um, set up. But that'll be all, that'll be all for tomorrow and for the end of this video. Um, uh, sun's way back in now. It's a little bit chilly, so I'm going to knock off for the night, and I'll finish this video off tomorrow. Okay, see you again soon. Right, well, good afternoon everybody. Yeah. Uh, cracking afternoon again, it's a little bit breezy up here in the northeast, but um, the sun's out. Uh, as I say, well, I'm, I'm in the shade here, so it's in the shade of the hut, so it's a little bit cool, but uh, I'm, I'm hoping that the sunshine isn't going to disturb the, the film too much. Now, uh, as I was saying, I pointed out my daily at the beginning of the, um, the, the programme, well, just getting some of the boxes ready, some of the big troughs. I've uh, run out of space this year, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my biggest ones and my best ones, all my show ones, in these boxes. It just ensures that I keep the tubers going good for next year. Until I get some of the land sorted out again for next year. But uh, well pleased with them. Uh, there's nine good varieties there, all the big ones. And uh, I'm well chuffed with them. I've got the boxes about four inches from the top. So once I plant them dealers into there, uh, what I'll be able to do, I'll be able to follow on for the rear with another fresh compost in about uh, six weeks time when they really get a hold and top the boxes up but uh, for the time being I'm over the moon with them uh, as I say I was, uh, I was busy on with the croissants 
Um, in the first video, and of course, some of the uh, some of the outside strawberries, well, have been absolutely cracking. On there, absolutely beauties, really, really first class strawberries. Uh, and these are the outdoor ones, never been, never had any special treatment whatsoever. There's some absolute beauties on there, well chuffed with them. Just uh, been going around trying to clean them up, as I say, um, as I say, when you've got uh, lots of debris lying around the top of the pots, old leaves, it's a rare, uh, it's a haven for the trap white fly and uh, beasties and slugs and whatnot. So I'm trying to keep the pots nice and nice and clean. Any old dead leaves that come on, just pull them off. You know, it doesn't do the doesn't do the plants any harm whatsoever. Chris <laughs> Anson Wall had nice good spraying. And uh, the same as with the dahlias, there's a couple of inches um, below the pot here, which is what I like because it means in a couple of weeks' time I can, I can top dress these. Uh, all these are gonna get is a um, is a bit of blood fish and bone spread around the roots. Uh, but for tonight, as I say, they're looking nice and clean. They've had a spray. Not like me, I've been there. Uh, I've been in the bottom, put tunnels, stirring up some of the, the nettle bars, and I'm I'm absolutely honking. So that's one of my jobs to do tonight is to go along and to get a Chris Hans a good drink of nettle juice. Really flood that pot. I'll probably get three pots for a, to a two-gallon watering can. Maybe three. I know it's a back-breaking work. Really flood the pots and give them a really good drink. As I say, I know it's been raining in the last few days up here in the northeast, but uh, the, the pots soon dry out. So, what I'll be doing this week and every week is just give them a good drink of nettle juice. As I say, that's all I'll get. So, I'll get a bit of blood fish and bone spread around the top, and uh, when they want their uh, consecutive waterings, I can, I can do that just to water the feed in. But uh, once a week, they'll get a good dose of, uh, of nettle juice. And that'll be it until uh, the setup blooms. I still on sure a bit colour and then I'll switch over to a potlash feed uh, which is uh, good for the blooms but don't until then until I just get a, 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 a low nitrogen feed of uh, nettle juice and as I say the blood fish and bones are rare uh, it's an all rounder, it'll feed the roots, feed the plant and it'll, uh, it'll give them a boost in the wind but yeah I'm well pleased with them, I'm well pleased with the outside strawberries like I say some absolute beauties on there and the dahlias are done so I'm going to pop in the bottom tunnel now and uh, sort the melons out and uh, start so now. We've had a few little disasters in the bottom tunnel. We've had um, when we had all the heavy rains. I had noticed quite a few holes along the top of the, the poly tunnel where the seagulls have been landing on. And of course, with the rain drip, drip, dripping through them on top of the sweet corn, I found that two or three of them got a bit damn um, heart rot and they've started rotting off from the inside. So uh, that's it. It's a disaster for this year. Um, but uh, no doubt, I'll, uh, we'll, we'll get that sorted next year. As I say, once I'm back on my feet again, we'll probably take the skin off, the whole skin off the poly tunnel. And if it cannot be repaired, we'll just put a new, um, a new, a new, uh, complete new sheet over the whole poly tunnel. If it can be repaired, we can, uh, what we can do is, what we normally do is take the, take the bottom one away, and this big one here is the newest one. We can turn that over and put that on top of there, repair it, and then get a new to go onto this poly tunnel. So I think that's going to be our uh, best bet for the end of this year before the winter sets in is to get a complete new skin and uh, that'll be both the polytunnel sorted for another, at least another five years so that's a plan but as I say you get these problems cropping up um, you kind of be on top of your crops all the time uh, you do get failures but you know you just got to keep plodding on plodding on and uh, hope you one day everything will come right for but uh, as I say, I'm going to pop down the bottom pulley tunnel now and uh, start sorting some of these melons out, okay? Right, well, here we are. Right in amongst them. Uh, as I say, I've noticed a couple of them. Um, a couple of the, um, the sweet corn edge is getting a bit of hot rot on the top. And I'm only surmising that because right along the top of the, um, the, top of the pulley tunnel where the holes are, where the, uh, the seagulls have been landing. I'm sure that's, uh, that's where the rain's dropping in. I've never really noticed it to be this bad. Um, I know we get a lot of condensation and that's all I've put it out now. Uh, I'm disappointed because I've got two or three plants with the rot on. Um, so I'm surmising there's a leak just up above them there somewhere and uh, it's been dropping down at the plants. But uh, it's one of them things anyway. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll get over it. But uh, as I say there, 
The sweet corn itself, they're absolutely rumping away, and of course here's a pea alderman. They're uh, nearly the size of me now, and they're just getting their tendrils wrapped around the canes, nicely. And of course the sweet corn's grown away lovely. I'm, I'm over the moon with that. Yeah, over the moon where they're growing. And of course the last thing I've got to do now is to, to finish this plot off. This is to get on and get them, and get some of these melons planted. Now of course the melons I'm using are uh, a sugar boat melon. And a small variety from Kings. So I'm hoping that they, they're going to do. I'm hoping they're going to do this justice. So you're kind of getting for the, the size of the sweet corn. Absolutely monsters. But uh, that's the size of our melons now. I'm over the moon with them. And all I'm going to do is to go along and plant six. in the centres and then just let them do that let them do their job and what I'm hoping to do is to get them just running all over the leaves will come out and they'll, uh, they'll hopefully cover the bottom canopy um, if they don't if they're a small man like you say though, and we don't get too much heat from them then I can always go to a, a smaller pump in next year but it's, it's, it's all trial and error it's finding out what's, uh, what's best for your soil and uh, what's best for what you're using it for as I say the three sisters is just a one of them challenges you've got to get the spot on, you've got to get time and right. Um, up till now, I'm pleased with sweet corn, I'm, I'm pleased with peas, and this is the third one. It says it's getting the melons in, and hopefully they'll, uh, they'll do it justice. Still get a lot of rats' tails uh, going through there, but uh, no doubt, let's get them a good water on in tonight before I knock off. I've got the marigolds in here, and of course they're budding up there now, so that's going to be a big help. There's some cucumbers down the side here, which need tying in the side wheel, so I've got to keep an eye on them. They all need a watering, so I'm going to do that. I want to get a couple of watering cans out and give them all a good soaking. As I say, normally I put a wiki hose on, but uh, at the moment the hose is in use, so I'm just going to, I'm going to, have to rely on the uh, elbow grease to get the watering cans out and give it a good soak for that. But, uh, yeah, I'll the moon with that. So that's the three sisters challenge. Um, that's the sweet corn, the peas, and of course the watermelons. So we'll just uh, we'll keep an eye on them and see how they go over the next couple of weeks and uh, I'll report back on you um, as the crops come on. Okay, I'll well, see you all down home. I'll finish this video off tomorrow and I'll give you a couple of pictures of the washing basket challenge. That's just about finished now. I'm, uh, I've potted it all up and fortunately I caught a couple of wood pigeons sitting on it last night and of course uh, I wasn't over impressed with that because uh, the fuchsias that were in they were growing lovely and of course now they've been flattened so I'm going to have to take a few more fuchsias down so there's a box of melons that's the, um, there'll be six down either, each aisle down the middle of each aisle and uh, hopefully they'll just take over the whole bottom canopy keep it nice and cool, keep the weeds down and of course we'll get a crop off it as well so that's that's the plan so for now I'm just going to knock off here as you see I'm getting the the first of the melons in, move them on with that. So that's here, that's what they grow well. So I'll see you all again soon, okay? Oh, what another glorious afternoon. The only sound is the blackbirds are on the distance here. I absolutely love this evening, this time of the night. Uh, sun just going down, and uh, of course, I'm just catching the. Uh, the last signs of the uh, last signs of the top bed, yeah. These are me, uh, me covering raised beds, and of course, this is where I do all me, must be hard enough. And of course, the last me spring bed, and, uh, summer bed, and still on the back here. Yeah. Few dahlia plants, marigolds, uh, some gladiola. Yeah. Definitely needs to be planted out this week, but uh, we'll get around to that. Uh, the main thing is I'm going to knock it around and just uh, finish off with we're trying to finish off here still the strawberries. And here I am on, the, on, of course, on the main bed here, and uh, this is where I do most of me potting off, and uh, I try to do a lot, take a lot of the runners from them. But uh, these are my strawberries, they're all set in the beds now. I can get this right, hopefully. These are all set in the beds now, and uh, as I say, they're all uh, the first year strawberries in the hanging baskets, and uh, as I say, they're all they're just set in green pots just on the, on the bench. And a bit of cover over the top. As I say, the, the bags are still in the basket, so I don't want them getting flooded, and they're just getting a bit of protection from the rain. But they're out here in all weathers, all nice, nice and fresh. 
All these are going to get is uh, a jot of bone meal, the same as what I've done with the croissants. Um, I've got some blood fish and bone there. I'm going to sprinkle a bit of that around them. Don't want anything too heavy. They're not in fruit. They're not in flour, so I don't need any potash. I uh, don't need too heavy a, pl uh, a mixture. So as I say, just a bit of blood fish and bone is perfect for me. Spoonful that around the plants. The main job now is to get these runners built up. And of course, the runners are starting to come on there now. And uh, as I say, I'll explain to you later on in the um, when we're getting at the strawberries when I start taking the root cuttings how we like to deal with mine. You see they're all I've got a few first year ones that we had just in pots and they're treated exactly the same way. They're just gonna sit in pots here and we'll probably gonna make it a couple of runners up them but we'll uh, we'll let them go. As I say there's plenty plenty of runners on I'm uh, I'm pleased with them so far. They've had a, a good spraying of uh, nettle juice. Um, some, uh, not metal juice, sorry, some, um, some garlic spray. I made a garlic spray. As I say, it's, it's primary, it's just a, a prevention to stop anything from eating them. They just leave a nasty taste in the mouth. I'll give them a good spray of garlic, yeah, garlic spray. They're fine. All I need now is a, a little bit of a feed, and uh, I might put a bit of nettle juice on them just to, just to boost them up, that's all. Nothing nothing too heavy. I don't want come in too much leaf on the top. All I want to do is to, send all the goodness into the runners and uh, produce some really good runners for next year. But uh, that's the aim of them anyway. So the strawberries are on the, the final pots now and the, they'll sit here now until July. And what will happen, I'll get some small pots later on and where the runners are, I can space these out again farther up once all the summer bedding's off here. And I can just put small pots or small trays with little pots in and just work my way through the runners and just peg them all down. The idea of this being they'll all be uniform. Every one of them will be put in the same time or more or less the same time, and when they're all rooted, they'll all be uniform. Not like when they're in the garden, bits and pieces rooting here, then everywhere, different sized plants. Nothing wrong with that, but as I say, when I come to put up my baskets in the summer, in the autumn, I like to have all my plants nice and uniform, all, all the same size, so when they fruit, um, you all get a good selection of fruit off them. But, uh, that's me aim for them anyway, but I'll, uh, we'll talk about that a lot more in the, um, when we get out the strawberries in a, in a couple of months' time. I'm just going to pop down home and I'll show you how I'm getting on with the basket. Um, I've done, been doing a bit of planting down home, uh, getting the wife's flower bed and that sorted out. And I absolutely love it in the evening down there at home, sit there, I can be, you kind of be outside my greenhouse and just watch the birds and the bees doing their own thing. Absolutely lovely, but uh, see you down home soon. Right, well, it's nice to get back down home again. As I say, the only thing I can hear now is the, is the birds. Uh, I'll just give you a quick look at how my patio's coming on, or I should say the missus' patio. Uh, I managed to get all my pots and I planted out my baskets. They're all well underway. And of course, our herb bed over here is what I'm going to concentrate on next week. Uh, plenty of cuttings to be taken there. Some nice sage. Um, mint, there's, uh, there's some lovely herbs over in the corner there, there's borage, and of course there's rosemary, I can take cuttings from, there's thyme, um, there's quite a few bits and pieces, but we'll, uh, we'll concentrate on next week. There's the same, my favourites in the corner, the big orange ones, it's called the can uh, calendula, uh, I'm going to be taking lots of seed from them for next year, as I say, if you want to uh, the good friendly bugs down at the greenhouses and they can't do anything better than get the old uh, calendula so I see I'm well pleased at the moment, patio's nice and clean, all cleaned down, baskets all filled so I'm well chuffed uh, did make one mistake when I shifted the uh, the bird bath to compensate for uh, getting my me, um, me washing basket challenge in uh, unknown to me, it's where the wood pigeons had to come down and of course I couldn't reach the seed uh, feed us from the when they used to get into the water container. So what I've been doing is perching that backside on top of my basket, and of course I've flattened some of the fuchsias. So I'm going to have to uh, rethink that. I may have to shift some of the chairs around in the patio. I'll, I'll uh, check with the missus first, though, otherwise I'll, I'll get into the bargain. But uh, it's all these little things that come into uh, come into question when you start playing around with the uh, with your pots not in the patio and say so just uh, best place to leave them where they are comfortable. But yeah, I'm well well pleased with that. Uh, as I say, I'm finished on the plot for the night. Uh, it's a top coat, top coat cooler down here. It's, uh, it's a little bit chilly, but uh, 
I don't know what it's on there. I'm quite pleased with that. This is just one of the little tricks I've I come up with for my basket. Um, originally I was going to put it on wheels, but uh, with the weight of the basket pressing down, uh, the wheels just give way. So I, uh, I've got a, this is a, it took from one of my water pots, one of my spare water pots, I've got stand on there. The main thing of this, you've got to make sure it's easy enough to turn around. And what I did though, you put a, a piece of square piping right down the centre, fill it full of holes and fill it full of gravel. And that's what, how I do my watering in there. Just uh, just fill the tube up and the whole basket gets nicely watered. And one of the main things is see with me being so fierce and, and what I was worried about was having to turn the basket every other day because if you, you know, if I'm so fierce and the only um, part of the basket that's going to get a St. Jane is a quarter of it. The other two is a third of it, sorry, the other two thirds are going to be in, in darkness. And if you let them grow constantly, what's going to happen is you're going to have nothing growing on the back and everything on the front. So you must remember to, to turn your baskets at least every other day. And with me having the handles here, I'm going to go north and south for a few to turn, just like that, east and west, and uh, north being turned. So it's every day, every other day, it's getting a, it's getting a little turning, and of course, I'm over the moon with that. It's, uh, it's coming on really well. Chuffed the bits with it. There. Nothing better than the wood basket up there. So I've been. Anyway, that's it for this week. I hope I've given you a few good tips. Uh, as I say, I'm going to carry on taking some cutting serves next week. And what I want to get started on is uh, going back to the tomatoes. There's a lot of people having problems with their tomatoes this year. Um, I find they're one of the easiest crops to grow, but you know, given the conditions, given the right conditions, your right soil, the right watering, then you shouldn't have any problems. But of course, problems do crop up, and it's knowing how to combat that when, when you do get them. But uh, we'll concentrate on tomatoes next week as well as take a few cuttings of the herbs. Um, as I say, taking cuttings is a, a challenging part of the job. People don't like to uh, spend too much time on them, they'd rather buy plants in. But believe you or me, if you can take cuttings, it's a lot easier, a lot cheaper, and it's a lot more satisfaction. But we'll concentrate on all that in the next video, no doubt. Uh, as I say, I'm down home now, I'm going to get myself way upstairs, have a nice bath, maybe have a can of beer. I've gotten on quite well uh, this week, I'm well chuffed. A little bit disappointed with some of the sweet corn. Uh, getting a bit of heart rotting them, but no doubt we'll come back that. Uh, what I might do, I might put a late sowing in. I've still got a few seeds in there somewhere. And I might put a late sowing in, so if I do lose any, if I do finally rot off all together, I'll put a couple of replacements in that place, so well chuffed for that. But there, uh, yeah. Get the cell upstairs now and get this video online. So, thanks again for the new subscribers. If you're new, um, new to the plot, well, welcome. Uh, if you can't wait for the video as well, get one more Facebook page. It's Jeff Holman on the plot, and uh, send our friends request, and we'll we'll get you signed up or, or on the plot. Let's see, we're on there most nights uh, on the computer, on my laptop, answering questions. Lots of new lads coming on site, lots of new lasses coming on site, which I'm well chuffed with. This is a gardens for everybody. It doesn't matter what age you are, um, you know, there's it, something in the garden for everybody. And uh, as I say, more than merrier, I'm well chuffed, so keep on subscribing, keep on sharing, and uh, don't forget to post your uh, comments down below, and don't forget to post your pictures on my Facebook page. Lots of people want to know what you're doing in your garden also. That's just how I was, so on the pot, show us your pictures of what you are doing, and uh, we'll send them around and we'll be over the moon. Okay? So I'm going to knock off for the night, and there. Uh, as I say, thanks again to everybody for subscribing. I'm over the moon with it. We're getting, there. We're getting near, a, near the 800 mark now, so I'm well chuffed. Uh, as long as you're getting something from the videos, and I'm helping, me and Roger's helping you, well, we're over the moon. But for the time being, I'm going to knock off, and uh, as I say, get this video online, and I'll see us, see us all again in a week's time when we'll get started on some cuttings, take some herbs, and we'll, we'll crack on with some of these problems with the tomatoes. Okay, so bye for now.